Do you think I have reduced? <laughs> First thing I'm asking in life. Dear friends, today we'll have our model test. It's a small model test, an easy one. And uh, we will have more like this. I will give you more and more awesome questions in the coming days. Guys, as usual, I'll read out the questions and you can tell me the answers in the chat box. Are you ready? We are just joining. Uh, we are just waiting for everybody to join us. Are you ready for the first question? There, here we go. Who among the following pioneered the bilingual method in foreign language teaching? Who of the following pioneered the bilingual method that is very famous? The bilingual method is developed as part of the audiovisual methods. It is a very basic method in uh, ELT. Audiovisual and uh, direct method are other methods of basic ELT. The answer is, many of you said it correctly, C.J. Dodson. C.J. Dodson developed the bilingual method and bilingual method includes presentation, practice and production. That means the teacher presents, then students practice and then they start speaking. Presentation, practice, and production. These are the three major uh, keywords of bilingual method. Okay. What is IC analysis? Everybody knows. Again, guys, a model test is not to test your knowledge. We are just reminding you what all you should look up and study before the exam. Tell me, what is... I see analysis. Is it immediate construction analysis or is it immediate constituent analysis or is it intermittent construction analysis? All of you know this one. I see analysis is immediate constituent analysis. Please do extra reading on. I see analysis and TG grammar, then phase structure grammar. One question based on any of these you can get. Phase structure rules are also called dash. Phase structure rules are also called dash. Is it deep structure rules? Is it construction rules or rewrite rules? Give the answer, guys. The answer is phase structure rules are also called rewrite rules. Remember, you are rewriting how the language construction is formed. When we speak, there are so many constructions that we make, so many ways in which words combine and uh, rewrite rules or phase structure rules, try to identify uh, how these are formed. But it was not a very uh, foolproof method of understanding grammar. So it was completely revised into generational grammar, transformative generational grammar, generative grammar also you can say. So in a sentence, there will be noun phrase, there will be verb phrase, noun phrases divided, verb phrases divided, like that it used to be done. Now, the London School of Linguistics is developed on the linguistic principles of which of these linguists? Is it 
जे आर फर्त और फर्डिनैंड डिसोर और स्टीफन क्राशन द लंडन स्कूल ऑफ लिंग्विस्टिक्स is based on the uh, contributions of which of these linguists the answer is j r ferd he was a linguist who talked a lot about uh, prosody and phonology and later linguists like david crystal has completely based many of their ideas on j r ferd he used to be a teacher of uh, the university of london and uh, london school it came to be called his uh, students even there is the term neo firthians all of you have heard of michael halliday m a k halliday m a k halliday is a neo firthian which among the following is a critical work on english literature by a e houseman you know a e houseman is not a very major a uh, writer but in the uh, exam uh, questions based on houseman are always seen so remember which of the following is a major work by a e. houseman on english literature is it last poems the name and nature of poetry more poems the answer is very easy you also know that a e. houseman was famous for the work a shropshire lad all of you must have heard of a shropshire lad it's a collection of poems by a e. houseman his critical work the name and nature of poetry is important it is critical work on english literature which of the following war poets was the editor of the anthology of war poetry 1943 this came out just as the second world war was ending it is a representative collection of the works of poets during the first world war this is a collection of works of the poets of the first world war it came just as the second world war was ending is it robert graves edmund blunden or robert nichols again this is easy guess because robert graves and edmund blunden are they are war poets it is robert nichols who brought out this famous anthology of war poetry 1943 okay uh, in which of the following works did w b yeats explore his geyer theory you all know that w b yeats had a very unique idea of history and how every 2000 years history turns in a conical shape called gyar and he talked about all this in a very important book that he wrote which is that book it is subtitled it has a very big subtitle an explanation of life founded upon the writings of giraldus and upon certain doctrines attributed to kusta ben luka yo look up this work okay the subtitle it is a vision published in 1925 wb hs a vision is a very lengthy philosophical work it has the subtitle an explanation of life blah 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 important book it is a vision and remember he used to copy the automatic writing of his wife georgie hydleys in a vision it is in this book that he developed his esoteric idea of uh, history and poetry identify the author of fantasia of the unconscious psychoanalysis and the unconscious and apocalypse these are very important books of a very very important writer fantasy of the unconscious and psychoanalysis and the unconscious it is not sigmund freud it is a book based on freudian psychology these two are books based on freudian psychoanalysis 
and the book apocalypse led to the name new apocalypse dylan thomas's group came to be called new apocalypse because dylan thomas was inspired by this book and this author it is none other than d h lawrence d h lawrence's books are fantasia of the unconscious psychoanalysis and the unconscious and apocalypse the book apocalypse inspired D dylan thomas and his group came to be called new apocalypse will you remember guys d h lawrence was a very major critic also he wrote about whitman and hardy etc right which of the following is a novel by kingsley amis oh you know kingsley amis he wrote lucky jim that is what you are thinking have you looked up all the novels by kingsley amis the old devils you know that are look at the options ye kya hai suna bhi nahi which of the following is a novel by kingsley amis which he co-authored with robert conquest are robert conquest was associated with angry young man new lines remember new lines by robert conquest so in this book an oxford educated egyptologist oh my god ralph trillipush is digging himself into trouble egyptologist he is study of egypt amit of ghosh also has done study of egypt and ralph trillipush has staked his professional reputation and his fiancee's fortune on a scrap of hieroglyphic pornography in ancient egypt also there was pornography all this is the story of which book you have heard of kingsley amis but have you heard of this other work the egyptologist temples tombs and hieroglyphics the anti death league which of these tarang the correct answer is yo the egyptologist did you know kingsley amis and robert conquest together wrote that that amazing work the egyptologist did you know that guys the anti death league also he wrote there are so many other novels that uncertain feeling today and tomorrow please find the time to look up the works of kingsley amis alan silito's novels remember angry young man another writer is alan silito you know uh, he wrote saturday night and sunday morning he wrote um, loneliness of the long distance runner his novels are mainly set in the region of dash is it wessex nottingham london many of you are answering it is a very poor locality loneliness of the long distance runner also is set in that region it is nottingham nottingham is the region where a lot of poor people live so i am trying to show you if you know about authors works all these co common sense and general knowledge if you have you will be able to answer you will be able to answer if you have this kind of general knowledge okay that and how do you get general knowledge of english literature and in england by reading you have to read extra wonder okay guys identify the author who divided literature into two broad divisions this is criticism but easy the literature of power and the literature of knowledge which author wrote that essay literature of knowledge and the literature of power is it f r lewis matthew arnold or thomas de quincey this is a prose writer famous essay in literature of knowledge and literature of power it is by thomas de quincey de quincey also wrote on murder considered as one of the fine arts uh confessions of an english opium eater very very important essays isn't it so on the knocking at the gate in macbeth important essays he contributed to london magazine 
Shelley is a defense of poetry. Was a rejoinder to. What is the meaning of rejoinder? Guys, knowledge of basic English language is very important. If you don't know basic English language, you won't be able to answer. Rejoinder means reply. P.B. Shelley's defense of English poetry is a reply to everybody knows. Is it Sydney's apology for poetry? Thomas Love Peacock's Four Ages of Poetry? Stephen Gosson's School of Abuse? The answer is everybody knows Thomas Love Peacock's The Four Ages of Poetry. Thomas Love Peacock was a neighbor of Sydney. And they were friends, actually. And Thomas Love Peacock wrote The Four Ages of Poetry, attacking romantic periods. He said, there are four ages of poetry. Iron, gold, silver, and brass. The romantic period is brass age. He also said the romantic period is second childhood. Thomas Love Peacock really got Sydney, um, sorry, Shelley angry. And Shelley replied with defense of poetry. Defense of poetry was written uh, in his lifetime, but it was published posthumously. Will you remember everybody? Are you enjoying this session? Or am I boring you with uh, common knowledge? Things that you already know, I am boring you. Am I doing that? I'm so sorry. Now, identify the work of J. Hillis Miller. Do you know J. Hillis Miller? He supported deconstruction because he was a member of the Yale School. Don't you know? Identify the work of J. Hillis Miller. Oh, he supported deconstruction, but he is critiquing deconstruction. That doesn't mean he is attacking. Criticizing does not mean attacking. He is actually explaining deconstruction here. Who is attacking? It is M.H. Abrams. M.H. Abrams is attacking deconstruction. In the essay, The Deconstructive Angel, J. Hillis Miller is critiquing or explaining deconstruction. I should say critiques deconstruction. Actually, it is wrong to say criticizes. Criticizes is actually a wrong word. So which is the essay where J. Hillis Miller is critiquing deconstruction in reply to M. H. Abrams's deconstructive angel. What is M. H. Abrams saying? M. H. Abrams is saying that deconstruction is like a parasite. Deconstruction is like a parasite. J. Hillis Miller in Critic as Host is saying the deconstructive critic is not a parasite. The deconstructive critic is like a host. Parasite is bad word, wrong, negative word. Host is good word. He is saying, so he is using the metaphor of feast. He, the deconstructive critic is not a parasite, but a host. J. Hillis Miller says, in the critic as host. Are you enjoying me? Uh, are you enjoying my session? This uh, My explanation? You have to tell me. Tell me, are you enjoying my explanation? Will it help you remember? YouTubers and Zoomers? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Now, Ben Johnson disliked what? That is the uh, question. What did Ben John Johnson dislike? Did he dislike wide-ranging chronical history and stupendous tragedy? Wide-ranging chronical history. Chronical history is not uh, real history. You know, it is ulta pulta. And a stupendous tragedy. Stupendous is also not a good word. Did Ben Johnson dislike the ability of satire to expose human vices and follies? The ability of satire to expose human vices and follies. No, Ben Johnson cannot have disliked that. Did Ben Johnson dislike the comedies of Terence and Plotus? Are, wo bhi nahi ho sakta. You know why? Because Terence and Plotus laid the foundations of comedy, of manners. 
and ben johnson's comedy of humors also is related to comedy of manners answer should be a because chronicle history is not real history stupendous tragedy is something that stupefies you it is probable that a is the answer because b certainly not the answer c also cannot be the answer if you know ben johnson's comedies you will know that uh, comedies of terence and plotus laid the foundations of comedy of manners and that led to comedy of humors so the answer is a wide ranging chronicle history and stupendous tragedy remember ben johnson was a very major classical critic he was a neo classicist actually even before dryden did you understand that is the answer then let me ask you a question one minute guys according to longinus the sublime has the following features okay uh, what uh, except what are the features of the sublime according to longinus it is the essence of great uh, poetry and oratory it is the essence of great poetry and oratory it is interested in the rhetorical goal of persuasion it is a matter of reader response sublime is the essence of great poetry and oratory it is interested in the rhetorical goal of persuasion this is easy to answer longinus believed that sublime has the following features except it is interested in the rhetorical goal of persuasion you know it is very clear in sublimity in the theory of sublimity sublimity does not lead to persuasion it it only uh, shocks you to understanding the aesthetic quality of that beauty persuasion is something rational okay sublimity is not rational sublimity does not lead to persuasion that is very important in sublimity sublimity does not lead to reason or persuasion okay remember that will you okay dom murray's serendip is a collection of dash dom murray's serendip is a collection of dash is it ballads odes sonnets is it ballads odes or sonnets it is sonnets remember dom moraes's serendip is a very important book why because it got sahitya academy award dom moraes's serendip is very famous and important then identify the novel that won the wick bread award for the best first novel and portrays the experiences of karim a mixed race teenager karim is a mixed race teenager in which novel it is the debut novel the first novel it is a famous novel that you know it is the buddha of suburbia by hanif qureshi the buddha of suburbia is a very important novel which is said to be autobiographical novel of hanif qureshi hanif qureshi is a, a playwright from asia living in britain right and uh, uh, his works are important you should know the plot line of buddha of suburbia he has also written intimacy the body gabriel's gift etc identify the post war american novel that has the protagonist yosarian john yosarian who steers a maniacal course through its many pitfalls he is trying to escape from something and he is not able to uh, find a solution 
he is like in a uh, so a situation where either way he will only lose. Is it Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut or Catch Twenty Two by Joseph Heller? The Crying of Lot Forty Nine by Thomas Pynchon. Many of you are answering. It is Catch Twenty Two. It is an anti-war novel by Joseph Heller, set in the Italian island of Pianosa, where Captain John Yossarian and his friends. Our bombardier pilots, they're all caught. They can't escape. Action is character in bold letters, in capital letters, which American novelist wrote thus in his notes for the protagonist in his final unfinished novel that was published in 1941. I will tell you the Name of the last unfinished novel, The Last Tycoon, it is called. The Last Tycoon. Which is the writer who wrote this action is character in capitals. Is it Henry James, Ernest Hemingway, or F. Scott Fitzgerald? Who is the author of The Last Tycoon? It is F. Scott Fitzgerald. F. Scott Fitzgerald. Which one among the following is not an argument given by Lord Macaulay in his 1835 Minute on Education? English should replace Persian as the official language. It is not an argument or it is an argument. Tell me, of course it is an argument. Translation of Western knowledge into undeveloped vernacular languages should be encouraged. Translation of Western knowledge into undeveloped vernacular languages need to be encouraged. No way that can be the answer. Indians trained in English can undertake the training of the rest of the countrymen. Of course, C is correct. That was his argument. Downward filtration theory it is called. Some Indians will learn English, they will train the others. That is downward filtration theory. Okay, so the answer is -da -da. Ayyo, translation of Western knowledge into undeveloped vernacular language. That is not an argument of Macaulay. Okay, identify the pre-independent Indian poet who wrote a Petrarchan sonnet which argues that the lotus is better than lily and rose. Lotus is India, lily is France, rose is Britain. Lily is the national flower of France. Of course, it is Torudat. Torudat's famous Petrarchan sonnet is lotus. Even though Torudat is a, a famous writer, many questions are usually asked on Torudat. Always remember to know every single thing about Torudat. Look up all her important sonnets, okay? The narrator comes into the possession of letters written by the 19, uh, by her step-grandmother in the 1920s. The narrator's name we don't know, but step-grandmother's name is Olivia. This step-grandmother had come to India. She is British and she got pregnant in India. This narrator also is traveling in the footsteps of her step-grandmother. Identify this Booker Prize winning novel. Olivia and her step-granddaughter. Is it Heat and Dust, Famished Road or Possession? It is of course Heat and Dust by Ruth Pravar Jabwala. The story of Heat and Dust published in 1975 is given here. Olivia is the step-grandmother. Her story is being told by the unnamed narrator. Will you remember, guys? What am I doing in this model test series? I am teaching you a lot of important quest, uh, authors, works, etc. Today itself, read about all these authors and works. Will you do that? Who wrote The Continent of Circe? 
Circe is a uh, mythical character from Greece, from Greek mythology. Who wrote The Continent of Circe? A collection of essays that discusses Indian society from a socio-psychological perspective. And he got into trouble for writing this. He's actually attacking Indians here. Is it Vikram Seth, Neeraj C. Choudhury, or Arundhati Roy? Galti say, I said he. It could be Arundhati Roy also. What is the answer? Continent of Sirsi is by Neeraj C. Choudhury. He wrote many books uh, provoking Indians. And he was branded anti-national. Neeraj C. Choudhury wrote Autobiography of an Unknown Indian, Passage to England, The Intellectual in India, Scholar Extraordinary. And he lost his job also for writing these books, uh, criticizing India. Okay? Right. Identify the Sahitya Academy Award winning poet. Oh, Sahitya Academy Award Milaisko, who wrote the poem Lear to Cordelia. Are about our King Lear. King Lear is speaking to Cordelia in that poem and presents a good difference between intuition and reason. Cordelia and Lear, their problem is analyzed in terms of psychology in this poem. Is it Nisim Esekiel, Shivke Kumar, Jayanta Mahapatra? Many of you are saying correct answer in YouTube and Zoom. I'm looking at YouTube also. And wonderful, it is Shiv K. Kumar wrote Lear to Cordelia. Remember, guys, all these are important writers. Look them up. Okay? All these writers, tonight itself, tomorrow morning, read about them. Which of the following terms is introduced by Marshall McLuhan in his book, The Gutenberg Galaxy? You know that uh, Marshall McLuhan wrote many works like Understanding Media, Gutenberg Galaxy, Medium is the Massage. You know, which is the term that he introduced in Gutenberg Galaxy? Is it Global Village? Is it Virtual Reality? Homo sociality. All of you know, many of you are answering, answering, answering. What is the answer? It is global village, of course. Global village means what? People throughout the world are interconnected by the new media. So the world has become like a village where everybody knows everything else, everybody else. Global village means People across the world are connected, interconnected by the media technologies, new media technologies. Therefore, the world has become like a village. Got it, guys? Which cultural theorist proposed field as a concept to signify the system of social positions evolved from power relations and struggle for power? For example, education is a field where there are power relations, struggle for power. Why do you all want to pass net? Because you want to enter the field and become professors, assistant professors. Why do you want to become assistant professors? Because you want to compete for power and you want to become heads of departments. You want to become vice chancellors. You want to become deans. You all are trying to enter the rat race for power. Who said it? Is it Stuart Hall, Pierre Bourdieu, or Jürgen Habermas? Habitus, field, cultural capital. It is Pierre Bourdieu. Distinction. Always, they will ask one question from Bourdieu. Please look up Bourdieu, all his terms. If you check Bourdieu, Kalyani Vallat, you will see my blog you know, online in the internet. There is my blog on all the major theorists. Bordhu Kalyani Vallat, you should look up. Then you will see all the blog entries that I have written. They are very simple and easy. You should read it tonight itself. Okay. Identify the metrical foot 
मतलब क्या है मतलब unstressed stressed unstressed amphibrach is unstressed stressed unstressed what is anapest bolo anapest is unstressed unstressed stressed tonight itself please look up all the feet in english poetry what is dactylic stressed unstressed unstressed so what is the answer two unstressed syllables followed by stressed is anapestic anapestic will you remember guys so many are there shall i read out amphibrach amphimacer anapest antibacchius bacchius cori yo critic dibrach Di spondy, di I am. Oh my God! I am reading from this book. Cadden, page number one eighty three, eighty four. Oh yo, read okay. So our short model test is over. I will come back in two days with more questions like this, explaining, teaching. I hope you will enjoy. Or beach beach me. What will we do? MLA citations. Okay, tomorrow we will take a break. Sunday, from Monday onwards, turn it on. Be ready. Okay, guys, in YouTube and Zoom, everybody. Ha. So I'm stopping live streaming. YouTubers, bye bye. Happy studying. Bye.